Hi, my name is Neil Keller. In this video, I'll be discussing some techniques that I use for seated, for, uh, seated wide leg forward bend. So in this set of exercises, the idea is to help you train your hamstrings to be more responsive. If in wide leg forward bend, your hamstrings are strong enough to prevent you from going forward at varying degrees, then ideally they'll feel safe enough to actually let go to allow you to relax into the forward bend. So to begin with, one of the, assuming that you're not, you have some flexibility, enough to sit upright, and perhaps bend forward a little bit, usually I start people off with a bent knee version of seated wide leg forward bend. Um, the idea is to bend forward, and even if you're flexible, you can start in this position because it can be a good warm-up. And also it teaches you how to use your legs. And very simple, very simply, the idea is to press your heels into the ground. And you have to be leaned forward a little bit. But use your leg muscles, press your heels down into the floor. And if you focus on gently pressing your heels into the floor and then relaxing, then press down, you may be able to feel your hamstrings along here activating as you press your heels down and that's the idea. So with your hands on the floor the sequence of actions that I use is one, press the heels down, feel your hamstrings activating, two, open the chest. So make your spine feel long. You can also draw your ears away from your rib cage so your neck feels long or draw your ears away from your shoulders so that your neck feels long. Next, and this is one of the reasons why you engage your hamstrings, is to support the body so that you can lift the arms. And the idea here is not to do it like this, but with the legs engaged to slowly, first of all, relax the arms so they're not pressing down. So relax the arms and then slowly lift up. And then from there, you can put the hands down, make your arms strong to support your body, and then relax your hamstrings and let your ribcage sink down. So that's step one. So that would be Press the thighs down, open the chest, slowly lift the arms, put the arms down, and then relax. You may find that just relaxing your pelvis can tilt forward a little bit, but if not, not to worry. Adding on to that basic exercise, press your heels down, feel your hamstrings activate, open your chest, slowly lift your arms, and then to add weight to the hamstrings, reach your arms forward. And again, rather than going like that, try to reach slowly, mindfully, and then to rest, bring the hands back, hands on the floor, and then relax. And on the relaxation phase, let your ribcage sink down. Use your arms to support the body, but gradually relax down. And you may find as you relax down, your pelvis can tilt forward just a little bit. And then you repeat, press the legs down, open the chest, lift the arms, reach the arms forward slowly, back, down, relax. So if you can't sit upright with your legs wide, you may find it helpful to sit on some blocks. You can do the same exercise, knees bent, bend forward a little bit or as much as you can. Press the legs, press your feet down, open your chest, lengthen your neck, and slowly lift the arms, slowly put them down, and then relax, and then adding on, adding on, press the heels down, Open the chest, lengthen the neck, slowly lift the arms. And slowly reach the arms forward. You can look forward with your eyes. Imagine reaching forward with your eyes as well as your arms. And keep your spine long. Hands back, sorry, down. And then slowly relax. And if you still can't sit upright, then you can always try a chair. And even if you're in the office, this might be a viable option. Um, because then with the chair, with your butt high enough, you can then use gravity to help pull you forward. So here again, you could maybe rest your forearms on your knees, press your heels down. So I'm just gonna, just in case I'm not in shot. So you could press your heels down. Um, so sorry. So you could rest your forearms on your, sh on your thighs. So here again, press your feet down, open your chest, lengthen your neck. And then here, slowly relax your arms and slowly lift them up. And then slowly keep your spine long, keep your legs pressing down, slowly reach forward and then back, 
brace yourself on your arms, relax the legs, and you may find that you can sink down a little bit. So now the next phase is to do the same exercise, but with the knees straight. And again, this is still preparatory work. You may spend a few months or even years just doing this exercise, pressing down with the thighs to support your body weight, reaching your arms forward to add weight, and then coming back. Uh, but what, you can also build up on that. So with legs straight, the exercise is basically the same. I'll do it facing this way. And I'm only open up about 90 degrees. The idea here is, um, so in this instance, I'm focusing more on the hamstrings rather than trying to widen the legs and doing a split. So 90 degrees is adequate for now. So here again, hands on the floor. And the feeling here is slightly different, but the action is basically the same. The first action is to press your legs down. And you may find you can press your thigh bones down, you can press your shins down, maybe your heels, but try to press the back of your legs down so that they support your body. So slightly lean forward or as forward as you can be. And if you can't get vertical, if you can't bring your body upright, then bend your knees so that you can, or sit on blocks so that you can at least be upright, and then the weight of your arms can help you to tilt forward. So anyway, if you can bend forward a little bit, from this position, first press the legs down, slowly. So if you start off like that, as you practice the exercise, slowly press your legs down. You can spread your toes if you like. Open your chest, lengthen the neck. And here again, slowly relax the arms, and then lift them up. And then reach them forward. You can look forward. You can focus your eyes, imagine reaching your eyes forward. Then bring the arms back, hands down. Slowly relax the legs, use your arms to support your body, but at the same time, let your chest sink down. And then repeat, press the legs down, spread your toes if you like, open your chest, lengthen your neck. Slowly relax the arms, slowly lift them off. It's like you're peeling your hands off of the floor. Reach your arms forward, then reach, make your arms feel long, reach with your gaze. And then bring the hands back, hands on the floor, slowly relax. You can do as you get lower, you can press your legs down, lengthen your spine, lengthen your neck, slowly lift the arms, and then keep them forward, put them on the floor, and then relax. And you can repeat like this, press the legs down, open the chest, lengthen the neck, slowly lift the arms, reach forward, and then down. And then after repeating five or six times, for the final, you might choose to stay for half a minute or a minute. You can just hold this position and let your rib cage sink down. Keep your spine long, keep your arms long. If you want to add a little bit of weight without actually lifting your arms, you can pull your arms up a little bit and that may help your rib cage to sink down. But try and pull your head forward as well so that the weight of your head also helps you to tilt forward. Now then, the next variation is to not activate the hamstrings prior to lifting the arms. And this can be a little bit intense, very uncomfortable the first few times that you do it. But the idea of strengthening the hamstrings first is to give your body, maybe your subconscious confidence that your hamstrings can bear your weight, can support you, can act as a safety net when you're bent forward. So now that you have that awareness, then you can try doing the same exercises with, uh, while keeping the hamstrings relaxed. So from here, you can have the hands close. So here, and also I'd say the, the other reason for practicing activating the hamstrings is so that you can feel when they're activated, so that then it's easier to keep them relaxed for this, for this next version of wide leg seated forward bend. So from here, keep your legs relaxed, slowly open the chest, lengthen your neck. And you can start with your hands in here first or close to your body, and then slowly lift your hands without tightening the hamstrings. And you can see how I sink down as the weight of my arms is added to the weight of my body, and then put the hands down and come up a little bit to relax. Um, you can gradually work your hands further forward, lift and lower, or reach them all the way forward. And you may find, keep your hamstrings relaxed, open your chest, lengthen your neck. 
Even just pulling your arms up in preparation for lifting helps your rib cage to sink down. And then you can try lifting, and there my rib cage still goes down. And to rest from the stretch, put your hands down on the floor. So be aware, the first few times you do this, it can be very uncomfortable. Even just doing that, I can feel it, um, it's a little bit, uh, well, anyway, the first few times I did it, you needed, I needed to rest afterwards. So do, when you do this, what you might try to do is try it a couple of times and sit up and rest for a few moments. Take your breath, notice how you feel. You may find, for myself, uh, when I work on extreme stretches, I find I feel um, laughter bubbling up, maybe tears occasionally, but it is often a joyous feeling. Um, but that's my experience. But so that, you, so that you can consistently come back to the stretch, take a rest from it. Try it for 30 seconds a minute. Move smoothly and slowly. And even if you can't get your arms up off of the floor, that's fine. Work towards it. But like I said, start with your hands closer in to your body. Try lifting up and lower and gradually extend the, um, reach your arms further forward to lift up. So again, the, um, I'll just show you the variation again, the final variation. So legs about 90 degrees. At this point you might choose to make them wider or narrower, the choice is yours. But the basic exercise with the arms forward is to keep the legs relaxed. Gently open the chest, lengthen the neck, and then slowly pull up on the arms. Try to keep the legs relaxed, keep the legs relaxed, keep the legs relaxed, lift the arms, and then put the arms down, rest for a moment. Then slowly open the chest, lengthen the neck, keep the legs relaxed, slowly lift the arms, slowly lift the arms, slowly lift the arms, and then back down. And repeat that any number of times. You may find you can get your chin to the floor. So if you can get your chin to the floor, again, keep your legs relaxed, lift your arms, try and reach your chin forward a bit, and then come down and rest for a moment. And then even holding this position, you can try reaching your arms forward, reach your chin forward, so that your chest has room to touch the floor. So if your goal or your idea is to get your chest to the floor, perhaps even your belly, um, experiment with lifting, pulling the arms up to add weight, try reaching your chest, your chin forward, so that your chest has room to touch the floor, and then try reaching your chest forward along the floor and down and you may find that eventually you get that magical moment where you actually feel your chest touch the floor um, while you're doing this pose or option which i do like but is also um, can be quite intense is to grab the toes and here it might help if you can get your head on the floor initially but here is a slight variation if you press your legs down uh, lengthen, open your chest, lengthen your neck. Then for this variation, actually use your arms. So instead of you reaching your arms for dad weight, pull up on your arms so that you're actually using muscular force to help your um, ribcage sink down, then relax. So open the chest. And pull, um, for this, I do find it helpful to press the legs down a little bit. And then from there, pull up on the arms. And then relax, open the chest, press the legs down, pull up with the arms, and then relax. So you could repeat that a few times. Experiment for yourself, try, see how it feels if you keep the legs relaxed and then pull up with the arms. And then also try it by um, pressing the legs down and pulling up on the arms. It's like you're using the muscles of the arms against the muscles of the legs, but so that you actually do go down your arms exert slightly more force than the resisting force of your legs. But anyway, hopefully some or all of that was helpful. If you have any questions, please visit my website or I've left a, um, a link to my comments. Um, so you can always send me an email or something like that if you have any questions or comments. And even if this, um, these techniques help you, I'd love to hear that as well. It'd be nice to know that I'm making a difference. Thank you very much. Namaste.